welcome again. Today we consider topic 5.4, eutrophication, as we outline the process, evaluate the impacts, and describe and evaluate pollution management strategies to deal with the problem of eutrophication. Topsoil erosion in tropical rainforests. A problem that would be greatly enhanced were it not for the presence of these large roots which prevent the rich soil which is so limited in the rainforest from running off and taking its nutrients, its nitrates and its phosphates in to the aquatic environment. Another natural source of nutrient enrichment for aquatic systems is the landslide. Human intervention through road construction can contribute to landslides. The process of large chunks of soil slipping into aquatic environments, whether they be rivers, lakes, or the ocean, is a natural occurrence. So this nutrient enrichment or eutrophication is something which can occur naturally in today's society. With increasing levels of urbanization, aquatic systems are coming under an ever-increasing threat from human-induced contamination. Here we see an outfall pipe taking domestic wastewater from a large hotel onto a beach and then ultimately into the ocean. With more people living on the earth, the demand for food is always on the increase and the need to get maximum production drives the use of excessive man-made fertilizers. Fertilizers that enrich this pineapple field, for example, are not organic in nature or coming from manure heaps, for if such were the case, the level of productivity would decline. Most of these fertilizers used in this field comes from initially the manufacture of ammonia and then the manufacture of fertilizer. The manufacture of ammonia itself is something that uses large amounts of fossil fuel energy in the form of natural gas. So the ecological effects associated with the use of the fertilizer goes beyond the mere runoff into the aquatic ecosystems, but it involves the use of significant amounts of fossil fuels to manufacture it. It's another human-induced source of nutrient enrichment with waste running off from chicken farms, cattle farms, pig farms, and any such area into aquatic systems and adding nutrients to the aquatic environment, leading to the problem of eutrophication. Eutrophication is defined as the natural or artificial enrichment of a body of water, particularly with respect to nitrates and phosphates. This results in a depletion of oxygen content in the water. Eutrophication is accelerated by human activities that add detergents, sewage, or agricultural fertilizers to bodies of water. From the perspective of pollution, we would have to focus, by definition, on the artificial enrichment, on the human-induced sources of this nutrient enrichment. Let's have a quick look at why eutrophication threatens aquatic systems. Nutrient enrichment by nitrates and phosphates encourages excess growth of algae. Fish cannot control this overgrowth of algae. Algae die and are decomposed by bacteria which suck oxygen out of the aquatic environment. This oxygen depletion ultimately results in the death 
of large amounts of the aquatic fauna, like the fish. Less oxygen, less fish. This leads to an ugly, smelly situation. A eutrophic lake. The main issue with eutrophication, or this human-induced nutrient enrichment, is the fact that it increases the load on the aquatic system, the nutrient load. With this increase in nutrients to be depleted by bacteria, it puts a greater stress on the oxygen resources of the system. The biochemical oxygen demand, which is a measure of the amount of dissolved oxygen required to break down the organic material in a given volume of water, this amount of oxygen is increased because of the increased load. With the decrease in oxygen, there is a depletion of aerobic organisms. Additional load is put into the system as they die, leading to even more need for decomposition and even further depletion of oxygen. This positive feedback leads to increased turbidity or cloudiness, lack of penetration of light, less photosynthesis by the macrophytes or the large plants that are just below the surface, like these plants here. The length of the food chain is reduced as many of the organisms that are lower in the food chain die as a result of the absence of their producers that provide them with food. In addition, recreational sources are lost as lakes take on an ugly, smelly appearance. So what are some strategies for managing the problem of eutrophication? And to think about the strategies, let's look at this model presented on page 40 of the ESS guide, which breaks the process of pollution into three management phases. The first being the human activity and trying to rethink so effects can be minimized. A second level strategy to reduce the amount of pollutant that gets into the system. And a third and more long-term strategy involves the remediation of the system. The first solution is the most ideal in terms of the effects and the cost. One of the most widely used management tools for dealing with the problem of eutrophication is the riparian buffer zone. For just as the rainforest is able to conserve its limited resources of nutrient-rich soil because of its network of roots, so too with the riparian system, by deliberately planting certain kinds of crops along the banks or along the pathway of the runoff from agricultural areas, it is possible to intercept the nutrient-rich runoff before it enters the aquatic environment. Not only is this an effective barrier, but riparian strips can also provide fodder for farm animals and a habitat for birds. Consider designing a model to test the effectiveness of riparian buffer zones. Which flask has been enriched by nitrates? That answer should be obvious. Define positive feedback and explain how eutrophication is an example of positive feedback. And to extend your thinking, it's been suggested that if fertilizers were priced in such a manner that it includes the external costs associated with eutrophication, then it would be used in an efficient manner because it would automatically lower the demand. Think carefully about this suggestion and evaluate the impacts 
of such a policy on society.